All right, everyone. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. This is Real Nurse Talk, and I'm Nurse Jessica. This week, we're starting our What Happens When I Get Admitted to the Hospital series. I think this is going to be some very useful information for nurses, but mostly for patients, because it can be a little confusing. So if this is something you're interested in, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and don't forget to ring the bell so that you can get my videos every week. I drop them Saturday mornings and hopefully Wednesday afternoons if I'm on top of it. All right, here we go. All right, so you might be wondering, what does happen when I get admitted to the hospital? It's kind of a secret. <laughs> you know, there is a, there's a process, there's a long process, and I think it helps kind of subdue your fears, especially if you've never been through it before, to sort of know step by step what happens, and that's why I'm here to talk to you today. All right, let's get started. So there's three ways that you can get admitted to the hospital. One is you call the ambulance or someone calls the ambulance for you. That should be for a real emergency, like you or someone else are, is not able to drive you to the hospital. You are that sick, you need someone to get there in minutes to stabilize you. So that is if you are not breathing, you are bleeding out, you are having a heart attack, any of those reasons. Otherwise, drive yourself to the hospital. Save the bill, right? So number one is the ambulance. 1B is by helicopter. If you're in a really, in a really rural area, sometimes they'll have to helicopter you in and out. Or if you're not in a rural area, but you are taken to a hospital that can't meet your needs, they'll do your best to stabilize you, do their best to stabilize you, and then helicopter you to another facility in a bigger city. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is you drive yourself to the ER. Number three is you go to see a doctor at their clinic, so that could be your primary care provider or it could be a specialist, cardiologist, nephrologist, you name it. They decide that you need to be admitted to the hospital. That's called a direct admit. And so they will call the hospital you to say what floor that you're going to, so that could be med surge or whatever. Med surge is notified that you are assigned to a nurse. You can go home, get what you need for your hospital stay, drive back, come up to the floor, and then they'll start admitting you from the floor. So that eliminates the ER part of it. So what next? Let's talk about when you're going through ER, because that's how most people are admitted to the hospital. Okay, so you get to the ER. If you're walking in through the ER, they're going to triage you. Triage is French for something. I'm gonna look it up. Okay, triage is French for to sort, in case you were curious. Okay, so you go into the ER and you get triage. So that means you walk up to the desk, you give your name. Oh, baby's awake. We're back. <laughs> and we're gonna do this with little man here because I wanna get this filmed and I think he's He's cool right now. Okay, so triage means to sort. So you go into the ER, you tell them what's going on, and then you're gonna be allocated um, like a severity level, which is why I'm telling you right now, save yourself time and money if you just have kind of a, a low temp and you just don't feel good, don't go to the ER, go to the urgent care. You're gonna get seen faster. It's gonna cost you less because if you go to the ER for something you know, you think you twisted your ankle or just something small, even a broken arm, you're gonna be waiting a long time because they're gonna see the people who are having real emergencies first. And when I say emergency, I mean you're gonna die if you don't get back there, okay? So if you're given a low level of severity, you're gonna be waiting and you're gonna be racking up that cost. So just go to the urgent care or even your primary care provider better. Okay. So that's what happens when you get triaged. If you're coming by ambulance, you're gonna get brought in through a side door directly into the ER, which doesn't mean that you're not gonna be waiting because once you're 
behind the front desk, you're still waiting to be seen by a doctor. And if you're not, you know, having a possible stroke or a heart attack or you can't breathe, then you're getting bumped down the list. Okay? Just, you gotta treat the emergencies first. Okay, so once you're in the ER, and you're getting seen by a doctor, they're gonna do their admission, which is asking you basic questions, they're gonna do an assessment of you. Huge tip, huge tip, guys. This will save you so much time and so much stress because the last thing you wanna do when you're sick is answer the same set of questions four times, which is pretty much what happens because you're gonna answer the questions about your history in the ER, you're gonna answer them up on the floor or whichever unit you get to by the nurse and by another doctor. So bring a piece of paper that has your medical history on it, everything you've been diagnosed with. You have, let's say you have diabetes, you go to, you have dialysis because you have end stage renal, you go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you had a heart attack in 2009, you have a stent, you had a hip replacement surgery in 2011, just everything that's happened to you, write it on there, and all of your medications because so many people come in and they're like, <laughs> I take something for blood pressure, I take something for sleep, but I'm not sure what it is. Or they come in with a giant bag of medications. Just have them written down. Have many copies so that you can bring them in, give them to your family members if they end up having to bring you in, because then it's all there. It makes it so much simpler. Then you know what medications, and we know what medications you're taking, the dose, how often you take them, all of it and we don't have to guess again what you're taking for blood pressure we already know what your primary care provider has for you and they've been working with you for a long time they've tried different things we don't want to have to try different things all over again because you don't know or maybe you're so sick you can't answer so i'm telling you people that have that uh. piece of paper right makes life so much easier okay so you're in the er now, that, now this applies for everyone who is ER or direct admit. You're getting admitted. You're going up to the floor or telly or whatever. I see you. What's going to happen is a nurse from that floor is going to come down and get you and transport you either by stretcher or by wheelchair to the floor. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to save that for part two since I've got little man here. Then part two, we're gonna talk about what happens once you're on the floor. All right, guys, and just so you know, whenever you say the floor, that means any of the floors of the hospital that aren't the ER or the ICU. So med search, telly, whatever. So that's it for today. I hope that gave you some insight of how you get to the hospital, what happens once you're there, some tips for getting into the hospital and making your life easier, and what to expect. All right, guys, have a healthy week. Say bye. Look, say bye over there. Are you just looking at mommy? Look, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye, guys.